I am happy to welcome Annie here. Well, our guest today, as you know, is Anieta James Ekiko, who was born and grew up in Akwaibam State. He is the founder and creative director of Ajay Filmworks. Ajay is drawn from his name, the initials of his name. And Ajay Filmworks, which was founded in 2006, in October 2006, is recognized as one of the best editing studios in the country. Aja Film Works has come to be recognized, among other things, for its work in the area of music video production. Some of the notable music videos that the company has produced are Jumbo, Mama, Laye, and Good Times by Kiss Daniel, Applaudies by Ion Ionyo, Left for Good by YJ, amongst others. As a creative director of Aja Film Works, Annie has received various awards for his work. These include Best New Director at the Nigerian Music Video Awards 2012, Best Music Video Director of the Year also at the Beats Awards 2016. So Annie, you're welcome once again. Thank you very much for Thank you very much for being with me. us this morning, for giving us this time. Now, we're going to be talking about music videos. This is an area in which you have a lot of expertise. Music videos began as a means of promoting the sale of music, but they have now gone to a new realm, we could say, with many of them being more like short films with a great narrative structure and so on. And we have yes. seen some very striking work in this regard. One author says that they are part of our visual language, a significant part of the culture of our consumption of music, art, and entertainment. Uh, but the thing is, of course, often we do not look at them in that light. We just look at them as a means of, okay, spending a nice five minutes, and then we move on. But it's actually quite interesting what's happening now, given that the whole structure for selling music has changed. So that many times now, the music videos are really what is most available to people. So, Looking at what is happening in the Nigerian space, we see more and more of these videos, which are continually improving on the technical scale. Would it be correct for us to speak about music video production as a key sector of the Nigerian film industry? And if so, can you give us some idea of the size of this sector? How many people, how many, what's the economic strength? If you have any idea of that, of this sector? Yes, um, that's a very good question. If I would want to give my answer to that based on my relationship with um, key vendors, because there are people right now, the industry has opened so much opportunities for a lot of people to come in and also be a part of the system. There are people now called equipment vendors. These are people that without them, they've grown so strong that these are the facilitators or the um, people with the proper infrastructure, the people building the industry from the behind the scene um, point of view, the equipment guys, these guys have invested in, so one of the vendors we work with, they have a capacity of equipment up to a million dollars, a million oh. to $2 million worth of equipment. And an average high-end music video currently, we still talk about 5 million, 6 million, and in Lagos itself, about 50 music videos are shot daily. Wow. I'm sorry, so, sorry to interrupt. Sorry to interrupt, Danny. Did you say, uh, when you said five, six million now for, is that the budget? That's the budget for the, the video that's itself? A, yeah, baseline budget. for video Baseline itself. budget. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So you, you have, so in a year, you could imagine 1,000 to 2,000 music videos being shot in, in Lagos itself, in Lagos alone. And you now have, you know, so many opportunities, like I said, you, you have people like producers. As a matter of fact, the music video industry is one of the highest employment of, of um, middle skill or non-skilled labor, because you have people like who were carpenters before now production designers. I mean, okay. when I started as far back as 2009, the system really never had a structure. Like the structure itself, 
just from you know how Nigeria Nigeria is I feel is a system where we're self-developing. Yeah. You know, there's no much not to even talk of entertainment. There's, there was, there is no structure. So we came in, we started building our own production team. Like you yeah. could not come and say, I want to hire a director of photography at the time that was available. They were only available to the elites or advertising. And I wouldn't even say movie because the movie industry was still way behind where music video industry is at the time. So I've seen the development of our industry spring so much that it gets to an unbelievable status without record. Like I'm talking street. <laughs> Do you get what I mean? Yes. Without record. It's gotten so big that, like I said, 50, 60 music video every day in Lagos. And all those music videos are employing label. They're employing label, skilled and unskilled. And then you have different sectors, production companies are coming up or producers are coming up to tell directors, you know what, I'll take care of your stress. I have a team. So it's easier to become a director now than before because there's, there's, we're not having a structure where people are taking on services to enable a music video, for instance, or a TV commercial happen. So um, it's it's a very it, the potential of the market is is um, is unimaginable because visual. I mean, we're in a visual and digital world now. So everybody's eyes are down on the phone. Everybody's you know on the on the laptop. So entertainment, your music is not that relevant if you cannot tell a story or if you cannot have a visual that represent or sells you as a brand or a music artist sells the product. So music videos are highly in demand right now. Right. And not just music video, content. It's, I mean, I call it content it's on high demand. And, and there is now we're getting to a level where people want budget, high budget music videos. And it's amazing. I, I can't say, I can't say the least. It's, it's, been, it's been for me to be able to see that process myself it's very exciting thing to see that Nigeria has so much potential in all the sectors. And as far as entertainment is concerned, I consider it to be one of the most viable sectors that employ youth in the country currently. So, yeah. Wow, I, I must say I'm highly impressed. That sounds really huge. But now you're mentioning figures here, which you could say surpass a good number of the two hour long feature films that are being made right now. But who is funding all of this? Is it the artist whose music is involved that funds this? And in a way, I will be rather curious as to how this money is, is recouped because the music video, much of it is free on YouTube, for instance. So, well, you will get your payment from whoever has commissioned the work, I assume. But then yeah. um, for those who, who, are, um, who are doing it, how do they recover that cost? And who really is funding? Okay. Um, the, there's so many, I mean, you, you're not having people in, in banking and finance, people bank, everybody right now, I'd say the sector has opened so much light. You, you see the likes of David, you see the likes of Whiskey, you, you see where some of our biggest ads have gone. I mean, some of mm -hmm. them, you know, cook millions in streaming. And when you say streaming, although I really understand that, that the Nigerian market really don't consume streaming, you know, yeah. but we have so much of us out there that are looking, you know, back home to, to try to consume this content. And, and so you have streaming now, I mean, before then, before the recession, before the pandemic, I mean, you talk about shows where yeah. artists book as much as 10 million a night for a show. Right. So you, you at the most, you, you just had to be able to put your music out, make sure it's good music and promote it well. So okay. when people get financing. I mean, any entertainment now is a viable sector where someone would easily lend you money if you had a good material to sell it. Just like the movie industry, you were talking about your box office sales, you know, how many, you know, what's the viability of your product? That's how music has come to be. So funding hasn't really been that difficult thing anymore. Before now, we, we had political guys at the time would, you know, there was a, a start, you know, there was a start of, of certain people 
putting money together to, to be able to go to, then it was people would have to, if you want good quality music, you have to go to South Africa to shoot yeah. good quality music video. And it became, as the dollar went up, um, you know, at least artists started looking down. Who are the best guys that could, you know, put these visuals, the quality that we need. And that's where we came in, you yes. know, at the, as, as the maybe the second or third generation of filmmakers, you know, came in and we started delivering those quality of content and we started developing ourselves. And yeah, so it was now possible for certain, um, certain people of the site, a certain class or certain uh, elite in the site to be you know, I'll be able to put two million, three million or a million at the time to shoot the music video. And with time, with the economy, with the dollar and everything, the budget has kept going up. And also the opportunities for these music artists to be able to sell their work also opened. Then there was distribution on the, the piracy thing came up and then before you know it, online, the online platform also opened and favored most of the Nigerian artists. And then you also talk about show bookings, but then boom, the recession. Okay, so most artists are now going towards streaming and you know, streaming, um, people get booked for online um, stream, you know, shows. And so it, there's okay. still, I, I'd say that we're still adapting our system, our structure, if you look at our infrastructure as, as a country, or if you look at uh, Nigeria as a place, you can see that we're still lagging in so many things but we have numbers we have the buying audience that i are still developing to that process of being able to be like you know what 70 percent of nigerians are on their mobile phone downloading songs or watching videos and then the youtube is also is also you know yeah. bringing you know a bit of income to this guy so right now the system is on survival mode but it's still working it's still you know we still see clients coming looking for more professional content we're still seeing that happen. So with that, I believe there's some form of sustainability, self-sustainability that our entertainment industry has gotten that has been able to hold from my own point of view, making the music video. And I ask myself that question, who is funding these guys? Yeah. But then by the time you get to speak to the boss, you know, he's oil and gas, he's a politician or he's a businessman somewhere in the East. And, you know, so you now see that the interest is now um, coming in and more people are trying to invest in, in the music artists as a brand or as a product. So what else do you need? You need a good music video. Who do you call? So um, I'm able to see that sustainability and that growth, the potential going up as, you know, hopefully our country is able to fix itself better, to structure things better. I, I see that progress kicking up because even without the structure even without the things in place that i mean we still survive the system so yeah. it's yeah great great well at least i think that that's one positive thing about the devaluation if it has made people yeah. <laughs> yeah. Focus, yeah. focus inward okay great now let's move a little now into the creative process itself oh by the way let me just say uh, the house please if you have questions please feel free to drop them in the chat box and we'll take them from there with regard to the creative process can you describe for us what is the relationship between yourself and the artist or the client what kind of interactions do you have with regard to the visual look of the video in other words who calls the shots is it you who tells the artist how it should be, or does the artist already come with some ideas of what he or she would like to see? Okay, yeah. Um, so the process for, for me is basically uh, is usually between the executives, the executive um, producer of uh, where's the client, the boss, whoever is funding it. Most of the time, they tend to have an idea on of what they want or usually from the artist, because he wrote the song, or she wrote the song, so they know what vision they're looking forward to. Uh, the relationship is best to do, is usually between myself as the director, as you know, the lead of my team, and the artist or the, the executive producer or the artist manager. And 80% of the time, um, based on my experience and the results we've been able to, 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 to deliver, most clients let 
us detect where they should go in terms of the visuals. And, but then the questions we usually ask, so I would ask you as an artist is who are your, what, who is the market? Like, where are you, who are you selling to? What's your demographic? Or I just listen to your music and with, I mean, obviously you have to love, I mean, I love music itself. It's one of the reasons why I'm making music videos. I love music. So I could tell you who would like your song and I would be like, you know what? you need this type of contents to be able to appeal to this to this um to this audience and what we do next is basically the ones that can give us that answer oh, i can detect that i would be able to come up with something we call a director's treatment a director's treatment is a mood board that has images or visual references that tells you what your vision or your visual is going to look like so I would put so much effort into that to make sure at 90 to 95% of the time, it works for you as the brand. And, and, and over time, clients just let me detect for them or just give, give me a brief or a synopsis of, okay, this is what I think. And sometimes I might decide to change it or I can be like, this is good. I'll work with your idea. But most of the time, I do the thinking of creating the ideas, the visual, the visual ideas for the artist. Okay, so it, it means that when you are pitching to a client for that first meeting, you tend to go already with a mood board, as, as you say, or does that come later in the process? It comes, it comes during the process. The, the first the process. meeting, usually, yes. The first meeting, usually when we are introduced to the client and the client is now, you know, letting us know who they are. So we usually receive something called direct, the client's treatment. The client has a tabular form of, if it's, a, if it's corporate or a TV commercial, they have a, a they have a, a treatment or a, a short story that leads us to understand what the direction of the story is going. And then we take that and then we develop our own visual board to represent what the client wants. Or if it's a music video, I listen to the song, I, I vision what the visual should be like. I conceive a story. I work with my writers. You know, we just go through ideas. And then we come up with a director's treatment for the music video, okay? And then by the time we meet the second time, we present our idea to you. And, you know, in most of the cases, the client loves what they see. And the next one is commissioning the project. You know, what's the budget? Um, how are we going to achieve this? What's the location going to be like? Who is the art director that can do this? Who is the location manager that can give this? Who is the stylist? Who is the makeup? Who is the camera operator? Who is the DOP? We start looking forward. We start building a team, or we look in house. Or who do we have? Or because now it's like production has got so it's expanding so much that now we now have people wanting to come into a production with with not just an intention of not being a director, but as a camera operator, as a DOP, as a focus puller. It's, it's so the small details of what makes a production crew is becoming a thing now where you will you look outside the pool of who is available and we start building our team for the production and then boom we have the budget we give our dates we come together and you know everything just stitches becomes you know everything just comes to life now it's pretty fascinating what you say all these various um roles which are being developed which are being specialized or people are specializing in now, I, I get the impression that you have some people in-house, but I get the impression you work with a lot of people from outside that you draw from. Yes. Okay. Now, how do you go about then? Um, well, I think a whole business of bonding, that whole business of ensuring that each person has the what you are looking for, because you as a director are the one who's setting the pace. Yeah. And if I may just add to that, for a young person coming into the industry who says, now I want to, I want to be known as, well, the DOP or the whatever. Now, how can such a person start to build that reputation? Um, thankfully, for social media, things have become so easy. Everybody is, everybody's a DM away. I, I used to say everybody's a DM away. You could... Building portfolio is the first thing. 
Right. Um, having the education, most importantly, you have the education, know how, and then you now have YouTube where, I mean, most people in art don't have to go to film schools or go to art schools anymore. People will just come online and drop tutorials equivalent to, you know, top paying universities. So having, it's easier now, it's really easy now, you know, comparing to the generation before mine or my own time where you had to go through a film school, you had to understand what cameras, you have to have forehand experience and then coming into an industry that was almost empty. But now it's so easy. We are having more, um, we now have more, we have more people coming into production and in a very short period of time, you know, end up working with a professional production team. Like you find wow. young guys shooting content within a span of one to two years, they're now in big sets. Then you have to work your five, six, seven, eight years down the line before you can even meet a director. It had to be by luck or by a serious arrangement. Now you could simply just DM me with the stuff you shot or just link me to your page. I come to your page, I see your stuff and I like it. And the right. next time I'm telling the producer, you know, we'll call our guy. I think it's good. We meet, we have production, pre-production, and yeah, that easy. So education is important. Know how, um, you know, self-education, I'd, I'd say that these days where we have so many, you know, limitations with movement, self-education is very important. But, but the time you're able to build fully for yourself or have something to show for, you know, it's, it's, it's very possible. It's, it's not a difficult thing to have access because there's always a demand for who is the next, who's, I mean, we used to depend in-house before the production was still very, very, you know, there was this monopoly where you get to own your team, but now it's like, I want to experience another DOP. I want, I see the work and I like his, his, his vibe with his, his picture style. I like his picture style. I want to work with this guy, you know? So it's now open and it's now saturated. So tapping into it just depends on who really, really wants to do this. Do you really want to do it? Do you, are you ready to learn? Are you ready to put your time to it? Because by the time you are able to do that, getting access is no longer, I mean, it's no longer a big deal. Yeah. Right. Right. Now, there was something you said earlier on, which is that, well, the client comes with his own vision. You come with some ideas and, you, of course, the client could also, well, could be convinced by the things that you have and so on. Now, yeah. there have been a lot of complaints about music videos in general, not just Nigerian ones, but uh, all over, about how... I mean, a particular one, a particular complaint has come from the objectification of women. Because many times, and you do see that a lot in, the, in many Nigerian videos, how the woman is treated as an object. So she's, okay, prancing around half nude or sometimes nude even. So now this kind of, because you said earlier that you also tell the client, you'll try to advise a client once you know the audience, that, well, this will work, this may not work. Do these kind of issues come up where you say, well, this thing you want to do is perhaps not so good for the audience? Who drives this kind of, you could say, content perhaps? All right, so um, as, far as, the, as far as my job is concerned, the client is my boss. I can also, I can also, influence their decision making but you know entertainment like they always say is over under 18 or over 18 there's, there's age you know restrictions and you know there, there are things put in place by the media to, to restrict access of younger audience into exposing exposing themselves into um yeah entertainment itself it's something called for me the clients who say it's called eye candy like for music videos, I mean, all over the world in Nigeria, you 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 tend to attract more people when there is something for, for them to see and get attracted to. So clients come with mostly the demands, oh, we need the final looking women, we need 
the lighter skin or we need the dark skin. So they give you all the spec of what they want. So it's less for the artist, me as an artist to be like, how do I present it? Do I expose way too much? Do I, you know, control how, what they see? So we kind of, personally, I like to control, I like to make nudity art itself. So if it's, I don't know about the subject, really the subjection of women, because obviously women, uh, I see women as a, a form of art and, and that's how I see it. I don't see anything as being, too much or too low in terms of, I don't put my mind on the morality side of things because that restricts art, okay? That's for me. But then I still find a way to pre present content and nudity in ways that doesn't offend anyone or there are stuff called censorships, you censor stuff. So art is open, it's open. I, I, don't, want, I don't want to go into the morality of it because if you don't do it a certain way, you might not have business. You have to do what the client wants them to do and then hold your belief to it. So I hold my belief to myself. So I do what the client wants that because they're paying this money, they want it to sell, they want to see a result. And part of this, I myself, I don't know who started this. So I don't, I just know that when I used to watch music videos as a young guy, you see lots of people watch videos like Cisco's music video, Thong Song, and you see all, all the ladies in the video, you know, so it continues and we as artists, myself, I try to control it and make it look, um, not look trashy or not look offensive or not look too um, disturbing. So we still have control over it. We have control over how it's seen. And obviously um, someone like me, I like, telling, I like telling stories with my visuals. I like a different direction with how my visuals go. So I haven't really done much of nudity but I still love it too, you know? So yeah, we have control over it. We have the power to, um, to detect how women are seen in music videos. And most of, our, most of us really try to do good with, you know, controlling that. And some of us just go with the flow or, you know, do whatever the client wants. So yeah, the directors do have control over it. And, but then ultimately it's the con consumers, ultimately it's the clients and, and what the consumers want. So, yeah. Yeah, actually, why I asked the question was precisely because of the comments one sees yeah. uh, from mm. the consumers. Because many times you see yes. people saying, oh, thank goodness, at least here the people <laughs> are dressed decently. <laughs> so actually, people seem to welcome the fact that the such videos are, in quote, clean. Okay, so really, that's why I was yeah, asking. Yeah, yeah, since true. one true is that. supposed to also go with what the audience wants, yeah, it's really yeah. to know what does the audience want in many cases. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now let me throw this question to you because we have spoken now about the client approaching you to brief you. You go back with your own ideas and so on. What is the typical time frame for all of this? From when a project, when you get the go ahead for a project to when it is delivered, how, how long does it take and how is the time distributed between pre-production, production and post-production? What's the duration? Uh, so the duration depends on so many factors. Depends on, it depends on the director's availability. Or it depends on because I mean some production houses have booking span up to a month or two or three. So also then the certain clients want to work with a certain director. So if you want to work with me, pre-production happens within two to three weeks of okay. conversation of trying to figure out what the direction of the project is going to be. And it also depends on what project for the corporates, which is advertising, and it's way more intense. It could take between one to six months to deliver one project. Yeah. And sometimes if the timelines are tight, two months, you can, you know, between pre-production, introduction, pre-production, production, and post-production, it takes two, sometimes two months, three months, you know, and, and then for music video is, music video is actually kind of really chap chap, you know, and, for the ones that we do, which is for me, storytelling is a thing for me. It takes a couple of weeks, three weeks to a month for a good storytelling music video to be shot. That means casting, um, costume preparation, meeting with the clients, approvals, 
scouting of locations, you know, approvals of locations, and you know, setting up the team, you know, pre-production testing, and then the actual production day. And then you now talk of a week of post-production. Now we have a different aspect of post-production that is called color grading. So we now have colorist that after the videos has been edited, it has to go through coloring process. And that could take another two, three days. So music videos, it depends on the quality. And for some clients that really want high end, obviously, you know, we're going to have to wait for a bit more longer time. If you want to work with professionals, most of them are always highly booked. You have to wait for the timing, the schedule. So it, it's kind of, you know, the schedules could be all over the place when you now look at the, this where the system is being, you know, divided these days. But I mean, subjectively, for a music video, we deliver between a week or two, between wow. pre-production, production, yeah. It, it happens really quickly. So the clients have to make decisions quickly and we have to respond as quick as possible. And then we have to make, so we, that's where you, you need actually highly skilled people because yes. really intelligent yeah, production people or creative people think really fast, make decisions fast. And, you know, bringing all that people together is where the value of production is because if you are able to deliver to clients with a high end production between two weeks, you are in demand. Music video people really want it to be done and done now. So, so we now have section of production teams. Like we can decide to have about four different producers with each of them with their own teams. Wow. So we decided to be like, you know, we're booking four music videos in a month. And every week I'm on one set on a Sunday, the upper Sunday, I'm in another set. But pre-production, I might use three weeks to plan all these videos, make sure with the writings, the treatments are done. I'll go through all of them. So it, it's kind of like crazy over here. So <laughs> that yeah, yeah. So yeah. So if you if you want to be in that level of demand of work, then you have to be ready to make sure that you have. Um, different setup of teams. So, like, personally, I have four to five set of producers that are interdependent. Like, right? they are very independent, and they can be interdependent. They can work with other people very successfully. So, I just, you know, that is the stress of worrying about the quality. The team is handed to the producers. So, they like the key people right now, currently in our industry. After the director, as a matter of fact. It's the producers that are the most um, that are the most important because producers do the hiring. Producers hire the director, okay. hire the production team. So, so um, fortunately, I've been happen to be an executive production part of things. So I, I'm able to hire producers that are better than myself to make sure that that is possible. If you don't want to be that hardworking, you can do two music videos in a month or one. But for me, for film, commercial, one project can get you on your seat for three months. Okay, so what you're saying is that for a music video, you can do that in a week, two weeks, and that is really yes. what the client will prefer. Yes, but when it comes yes. to commercial, then more time. That takes more, more time. More time. That takes more time. Uh, actually, uh, the thought that crossed my mind as you were talking was if you're going to make the music video, in a week, two weeks, but at the same time, you want to develop a story. Doesn't that aspect take time? Developing a story, if you want to make it a narrative music so, video. Um, so there's, there's been some level of expansion in, in production. Like I said, there's been some level of expansion where you really don't have to do all the thinking okay. anymore. Mm -hmm. So I listened to your song at first or second or fourth time I listened to my song, to your song for the first time, I don't listen alone. And it's like, you would definitely burn out if, if you want to go by this, by the way I'm talking about it right now. So when I say five music to four music videos or walking or being on set every Sunday means you're working with highly effective individuals that for me, listen to your song, I just have to have a speck of idea, okay? I just have to have, and then someone else takes it up and expands it to different options. So that's like I said, production has expanded so well that there is employment. There is just, are you right? There's employment. Right. There are people called writers. They're writers, they are 
you know, storyboard artists there. So you, you just, so we're getting to a point where I, I see in 50, 20 years from now, we're going to be producing more than Hollywood in terms of revenue because there is work. So a director really doesn't have to think through the entire process like before, oh, I'm the one doing everything. No, you burn out, you literally implode. So you just have a speck of idea and a writer takes it off from you. Someone that writes 200 times better than you because there has to be people better than you are. And I mean, obviously division of labor, a writer takes it off from you, just have a synopsis. So I just need to have a time to listen to your song. And I'd like to do this. I'd like to shoot on a tree. I'd like to shoot here. I'd like to do this. this. I'd like to come with a story like this. Or I, So basically what I do personally is just, you know, you know educate myself, have enough ideas, um, have a lot of resource centers where I go to get inspirations so that whenever something comes, it's easier for me to pick something from an archive or a picture I have on a wall or a sticker somewhere. It just has to be a way for me to store data so I can always extract it. So I just need to have a one page synopsis of my music video and someone else takes it off for me, writes it, and then another person takes it up and then do pictures. So actually I will just go on Pinterest for references. Oh, I see this picture, I see this art form, or I see a clip in a movie, or I walk past something, I take a picture and I share it with the team and they develop it for you. So that cuts the time that you, you, you put into it, trying to figure it out alone, to figure it out for you. So Within 48 hours, we come up with a good story for a music video. 48 hours, actually. And then oh. multiply that process. Yeah. Have four writers, four very good writers with backups. It's, That's impressive. I mean, we know how, yeah, it's like a factory. In Nigeria, it's like, like I said, there's really no structure that says you have to be so everybody's on like on the clock. So, you know, being ready is actually being able to build up a team or being able to work, collaborate with people, being able to, um, you know, being able to, it's, it's a very human resource intensive, you know, work where you have to be able to know who are the best people. These days we go on Instagram and learn Instagram itself, there's LinkedIn, there's Fiverr, you just go there and the, the tons of, you know, creative people all over the place. So it makes work easy now. It certainly does. I, I am fascinated by this whole idea of job creation, because from what you say is so much opportunity being created. Uh, it's yes. an area of, uh, of uh, research interest for me, that of the creative worker. Now, what kind of payment are we talking about here because if so many jobs are being created what is it because i know that some some work I, I did in the past in with reference to gaffers for instance this was a few years back and the complaint was that the pay generally was not very good but this was in reference to gaffers at that time so i would like to know really as a way of attracting people into the field, what kind of payment? Because I know that those who are recognized for their work certainly will be able to demand more because they already have, a, have an established reputation. But for those who are just coming in or who are trying to build a career, what kind of payments in terms of salaries will these guys get? So I think um, personally, I, we've, I've been able to defragment the concept of pay. For in, I mean, creative people don't never have enough. You you can you can't pay an artist well enough. <laughs> you, you cannot pay an artist well enough. So coming saying that so myself, you know. So <laughs> the, the better they get, the more they want. And there's no regulation as to this is what the fees are. So it's about what is convenient for you. What are you what? you know, what's your portfolio, right? That's where you have to start about what is convenient. But I, I think for even upcoming creative people, they, they're doing well enough. Because I really okay. haven't, I still see, yeah, I still see wedding videographers of today still doing, they don't complain because, I mean, somebody hands you 500 grand or 200, 300 grand a day. 
And it also depends on your level of investment on your craft, right? As a gaffer, for instance, you should come with a gaffer tape. You should have your, your tools with you. You should be able to invest. Those are the things yes. that add to your value. I mean, what's your value actually? Okay. So anybody that complains for me, I mean, speaking from an executive producer that hires people, anyone that complain, look at the look at what they're doing. I mean, why are you complaining? <laughs> There's something you're not doing. Because as far as you're doing the right thing, you are going to be paid well. Because okay. it's like I want to I want to share the music video and. I'm telling my producers, I want to work with Casey. I want to work with Mr. Movies. Oh, I want to work with Mohammed Attar. I want to work with these guys. Their fees are different and there's nothing you can do about it. Is that you wait for them or you pay them money? If you want to have them, oh, so it's, I mean, it's obvious you can tell, you know? So as an artist, it's, it's, it, you, you do the work of, of it putting value on yourself and your services. And that has to do with how much salary you earn, how much fee you are paid per day. Right. Because, I mean, in, in filmmaking, except you're running in, in media, big media advertising, because now media has been central, decentralized. I mean, people work from home. I mean, you don't have to really be in the office to do anything mm -hmm. anymore. There's Google, there's so many platforms that teams work online, you know, offline and stuff. So, there's like I said, I don't see any any problems. I don't see I, I see I see the, I don't see that complaint. I really don't hear of it anymore. It used to really happen then where the system yeah. was still crashing. The system was still crashing. Directors with their own producers, with their own location guys, their own gaffers, their own DPs. That was how Nigeria is. That was how this, our production industry started. You do literally everything, so you are scratching to. You're arguing with a gaffer, you no, it's, it's different now. And except you are upcoming and you are greedy and you want more than you can get, then you get <laughs> you get the complaint. But as far as you put in work on yourself, I feel and I believe and I see that I mean opportunities are opening up and these young artists are getting, you know, they, they're getting comfortable. And it gets more, I mean, as you step further up you 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 experience a different pay and you know so yeah great no that's uh, that's good to know that's good to know but let me take you back to the what you were talking about in terms of the colorist i have a question here from tilly who says thank you uh going through some of your music videos i noticed a tendency to desaturate your images almost a pastel look or sometimes you just go monochrome, black and white. Could you speak to this choice? Is it just personal aesthetics or is it determined by technical limitations? First of all, I don't think I have anything I've done that is, if it's even technical limitations, you would, it wouldn't be in the color. It wouldn't be, it might be some form of improv, improvisation for me. Um, if I do black and white, I'm, maybe I'm doing a timepiece or I'm trying to just give you some level of nostalgia with something. C color for me, um, and, then, and then I'm sure this person is talking about my older version of work, my old works. There was a process that we went through at the time, which wasn't limitation, but the platforms that we used to at the time. I'm talking five, six years ago, not too long. And, now there's software called DaVinci Resolve that's very powerful. You can, you know, you can separate colors differently. So I'd say that it wasn't like it was a problem. It was just with our development or our access was. But then consumers, the clients also wanted videos that were something called organic film that was not too colorful, okay? And then sometimes the client wants to, oh, we want a classic music video of 1970 like the one we did for, um, and that is called, um, what's his name? Shantizu Komole, yeah. So we shot that video in Ibadan. I was trying to depict Ibadan in the, throughout time, it, it was a Guinness project. So we were trying to pass through the 19, 
thirties, the nineteen fifties, sixties, the nineties, yeah. and the thousand. And then as you progress through, you see the colors change. So color for me also part of what creates an emotion in the visual. You use color to create emotion. So I try to alter it sometimes to just give it a flat look and just make you focus on the story and not be distracted by the colors around it. So it's an intentional, it's intentional thing. You can decide to saturate your skin tones. You can decide to desaturate is all a choice for you as a director or as an artist or what the client wants. So it's a collection of the clients, what I want, what the idea or what the style wants and what the time of the production you know can get so okay thank you then another You're question welcome. i have here is you have told us that well every day in, in lagos about 50 50 music videos are shot and you have said that for your own productions you could do about four in a month now how many if 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 i wanted to be just a music video director or producer how many of such shows would i need to sustain me comfortably for a year or would you say that well no that that second part of the question perhaps doesn't, doesn't come in now because you have said that enough is going on for this to happen but in order to be comfortable to pay my staff and so on like how many videos or how many of these productions would I need to be involved in in the space of a year? Well, um, it, it depends on the lifestyle you have. It depends on you know, on the lifestyle you have. And, and obviously, as a person, you have to look at your income. And I mean, I do understand that the most part of Nigeria, we're in a survival. That's yeah. right now we're trying to survive. So you don't need much it, it depends it also depends on what's your portfolio how there's a stage where you have this conversation where if it doesn't make sense then look at it like what am i doing wrong what am i what am i not doing but as far as content is concerned and you are where you should be you are doing the right marketing you're meeting the right people you are doing the right projects it's it's very at, 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 at that point, sustainability, we don't talk of you being, it's at that certain level, if you have the right portfolio, you have the right clientele base, there is always content. There's always a visual that needs to be done. And as a tease, I don't still feel we have enough service providers. There's never enough clients want to try different people. So who is in the client's face? So, I can't tell you how many jobs because I know projects that would sustain you for a year. One project, the same. So, but then you have to be, you have to be in that position to be able to get that type of project. The project you do yeah. and it's just one and it sustains, pays your rent, buys your food. If you have a family, you can take care of your kids. One and then there certainly you have to do five. So I really can't tell. It depends on who is this person, who's an, who's the individual. Are you upcoming? That means if you're new to the business, you should be able to, this portfolio building you should be doing now, be able to cut on your cost of living, you should be able to, you know, until just like every other life process of, of you're in a business, you have to nurture the business from small, higher one staff if you don't need too many, you know, do a lot of things yourself. So it's, it's just like any other profession, you just have to nurture it to a point where, you know, this is now sustainable for me. And at that point, it's not about a number of how many projects you do. There are projects right. you do and you you, uh, you you have, you get paid from sales of that project. There's certain content you produce, oh, Monica, I need to take 2% on, on, on YouTube, on YouTube revenue, or there's so many ways where as a producer, as far as you are part of the originators of that content, you can decide to make a different level of negotiation for yourself that will pay you for life. So it's it's about it's it's a growth thing. It's, it's it's not something you can decide and say, oh, how many this is how many projects I need to do. You know, if you're a wedding, a wedding photographer, a wedding filmmaker, you can decide to do every wedding, one wedding every week, and it takes care of it takes care of you for the you know, wedding is chop chop, get the story going, go there, take the edited, deliver. It goes out on your social media. People see it. 
you know, so it's, it's a hustle of consistency. And I usually use words like investment. Also as a filmmaker, we all know this thing is not like, it's, it's a template that it must happen every day. Like you're nine to five, you're expecting yes. a salary every month. You know, it's not like that. So you get to know, sometimes you face droughts. Sometimes, you know, clients don't, market just don't, things don't just move as they should be. So I feel people, filmmakers do have to have side hustle. Things they you invest your money on, buy, learn stocks, or understand buying stocks of investing your money outside the shores. You know, things that could just be giving you annual income or, you know, monthly income. I mean, there's from any level that investments to kind of have a support system for yourself rather than depend on if you're not shooting over chop. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it has to be a way of, you know, I mean, with Nigeria, we all we all know how the system is. So it has yes. to be a means of, you know, this other hustles on the side. There's something called POS where I tell my young gaffers, I mean, if you're making 20 grand or 30 grand per day, you know, or within, and then you're shooting like five projects that week, that's like 150K, you know, after I mean, put that together in a month, you can have one POS center that is giving you like 500 bucks every day or 1,000 okay. bucks. You can, you can get, you know, you're a gaffer, you may buy an Uber, two or three car caps and, you know, so they, they, they are things, they are, hard, they are ways to sustain yourself as a filmmaker without, you know, having to go through all that stress of, of um, financial hike up and having to wait for another project to come before you can. So that's, that's on my own opinion, what I feel, if I answered your question correctly. Oh, no, certainly, certainly. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, because I, I think it, 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 it responds to that idea that, well, one is, one, one's work depends on the client. If no client comes, you don't have anything, but rather than just depending solely on that, I, I think that from what you've said, that kind of approach will also give one, which will lead me to my next question, it will also give one a measure of creative freedom that you can choose. You can choose to accept the work from this person or not. Perhaps you listen to the song and you hate it. <laughs> I said, no, I don't want anything to do with this. If you have that financial freedom, you can afford to do that. But now, like I said, this takes me to my next question. Uh, in an article I read, the, the author said that music videos can push the boundaries and be pieces of pure creativity. So it's one thing, yes, I do the work because I am concerned about earning enough for my upkeep. But on the other side, it's also for you a means of self-expression, I would like to think. So how do you manage to balance both aspects? Because some people, clients, would say, no, this thing you're doing or you want to do, I, it doesn't make sense to me. I don't like it. Which is also a limiting factor for your creativity. So how do you manage to balance both? Okay, so um, how I balance creativity and the decision to my decision making as far as where the art goes or if I want to take the job or not, like depends on how I feel. No, I'm actually in a point where I'm doing business now. So I know who to go to. For me, it's about for me, I see art as legacy. When you're, when it's a good body of art, it's, it's, you can be a director to, being a director is a job you don't retire from as far as, as long as your mind is in, is, in, is in it, your mind is in the right place, your creativity is in the right place. As long as your inner child is still alive, you do it forever. And at that point, you choose what to do or what not to do. So if I'm working with clients, Obviously, we have producers now, we have managers that tell you, Ajay, you have to direct that video to get these people can lead you to this. So it's a strategic decision making right. at this point where you have right. to look at the consequences of doing something or not. Okay. And we're like, oh, who's the hottest new artist right now, Ajay? You need to direct his video because it has this oh. audience. And what type of video does he like? And then we're like, okay, cool. And then boom. 
we set him up and then he calls Ajay or we call, we call him like, we have this idea for you. And then he's like, oh, I love it. Like, Ajay is going to be there. Like, yeah, we love it. Let's do it. And then we shoot that video for him. And then his channel opens. Other upcoming artists that look up to him start calling us, you know? So it's, it's a strategic move wow. at this level that I am, that I'm aware of the industry now. I know who is doing what, who to work with, who not to. And then doing that is also marketing and then people are coming. So you're listening. I get to listen to, like, if I was to be listening to a hundred songs every day, it's possible because our email is down right now because of songs. Like our server, we can't just be poor mm-hmm. our server because people, there's so many artists in Nigeria, like, in every family is an artist, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you are like you are like you know he's saying choke you are choked with so much so at this point i choose what to pay attention to what not to because if you don't so i listen to the songs i want to i shoot videos that i love the music or i see a potential in an artist i'm like i feel like i should work with this guy i know where this guy is going let's do it and then eventually boom it happens so is but that's for me i mean right. if you are upcoming you are doing everything like look your name has to be on everything if you could possibly go write your name on a graffiti wall <laughs> and some in some place you know people will say it please do it because the wall is super saturated it's super saturated the art wall is super saturated even as it is in nigeria where i still feel we haven't touched as far as art is concerned we haven't done the most yet but it's super saturated that you just need to be able to make sure that you are special you you need to have like a, a special thing for yourself where you easily get to the point of deciding what to do or not because every every artist decide what to decide it or not you if you can't get to that point then well i don't know for you but then when you're starting every project is important whether you like it or not it has to be done it has to be done well you have to leave a good remark and you have to be very very understanding with the clients because at some point at this level, I feel there's still, there's always a little bit of arrogance to it where for your, for your safety, for your creative safety, you have to be like no to some things or no to certain clients because when once you gain there, it becomes problem for you or, you know, so preserving your mind is also important. Even when you're upcoming and you still feel like doing everything, you need to be careful with because certain clients will break you, certain people will break you, will make you feel what less you make you feel like you shouldn't be doing this job or it's not for you. You need to be careful with all those energy and just make sure that when you meet people, you're trying to know what they want. You're trying to be clear with the objective. You're trying to be clear with where they're going and you make sure they approve stuff. So you don't, in the hustle of trying to, oh, I want to get there. You, you can be broken where you, you, you fall off. You don't want to do it again. Because um, directing the art, this art is is very time consuming. Is is it has to do with your emotions a lot. I mean, you know, art is emotional thing, so it's very mentally draining. So working and getting up to a level where you feel you can make your own decision is is is, is one of the hardest things to do. But if you can preserve yourself to that point where you can't be broken, yeah. That, that's the best thing. But then I feel every artist on, on an upcoming level should do every art, should touch everything, should experiment on things, try out if you're going to fail, it's normal. Just make sure you do every project you can try. Because I meet people that say, I'm, I'm a documentary artist. I can't do that one. I'm like, but then, every, I mean, you can't really tell if you're a filmmaker, you're a filmmaker. I mean, the more versatile you are, better your opportunities especially in a country like nigeria where um it's in a small system but then we're getting to a point where it's going to be there's a whole lot of competition so you have to be able to do be multitasking or multi-versatile with your art you should be able to make a music video you should be able to make a film you should be able to make a tv ad for a corporate brand you should be able to do documentary so you can be like i'd like to try this and then it clicks and then you have clients on that niche the list goes on. <laughs> it does indeed. It certainly is a business. Now, still speaking about this, uh, the, the aspect of creativity, what are the platforms 
that exist for the music um, music video producer to gain recognition. You have won a few awards, but Apart from the Nigeria Music Video Awards, which I, I, I don't know what the status is right now, are there other platforms in the country that you say, yes, are targeted directly at awarding the kind of work which is going on in this sector? So uh, be honest with you, to be honest with that, I don't, um, Almost like personally, maybe that if that question was tailored to my manager or tailored to um, I am not hundred percent in the know of. I shy away from the recognition of award. Oh, you're the best! <laughs> I, I just try not to feel like I really try not. To, I still feel like I'm upcoming, so I don't know. But yeah, there is there is a couple of them. The Future Award does, you know, the Future Award, AMA Award. Um, it, most of them are tailored to the, the director. Like yeah. nobody really, I, I don't think there's any that, because well, I really want to, people to work, who's this the best art director in the country? This is the best stylist, this is the best makeup artist, this is the best producer, the best content writer. Um, I think it still has to do with how the evolution of our, you know, production industry. I mean, we're well over, it's not, we're still young and everybody's still trying to do the same thing everybody else is doing as far as recognition or the organizers of, you know, um, recognition, you know, whatever. Everybody's just still trying to be like, oh, the directors are the guys, the directors, the actors, you know, um, the, well, but I haven't really seen any platform that yet is recognizing and I hope we'll be able to build one in the future because there is so much to what makes you a successful director, which is your team. It's absolutely, you are nothing, even as an upcoming guy, you have to build, you have to turn, convert your people to your team. You just build a demo production team. Call your brother, right. the producer, call your cousin, your manager, and let the person pick your call and just see how it feels. Because when you get to a professional level where a client is saying, you know what, the budget is 50 million for this campaign, you can't not, you can't not miss to work with a good team. So these guys are way more, I hide myself. I try to make sure that these people shine. For me, it's like my producers are the people, like they are the warriors. Okay, if I'm sleeping, they're not sleeping. So this is very important for the system to encourage um, these people and to you know shine shed light into the industry of that of that of that sector to encourage because this thing is employing producers are earning more than bankers these days man producers mm. you know some producers earn 500 gram per project per day okay some earn more some producers even go as far as getting the clients for you so the client pay them to hire you as a direct so, so there are certain producers that call me at what's up i have a commercial for you i'm paying you a fee by dm 24 hours and then you don't know who the client is you're telling you know send me the treatment you see the treatment is been done so what you just need is work on set look at your treatment do your director shortlist go on set action direct your actors enter your car go house and then the director, the producer pays your fee. So it, there is, is it, there's so much going on that the system is not shedding light on. So kids don't go to school and, I mean, you have a talent in arts, you know, why are you going to go and read engineering? Or if you're doing engineering, why don't you think of, I want to be the best grip in film in Nigeria. That sector is unexplored. I mean, why aren't you shooting films where Actual a natural car is captured in Top Milan Bridge, flip through the water in real time. Those are expertise that in the future of filmmaking in Nigeria, which we know we're going to be doing things like that, needs and we need indigenous talents. So I, I, I wish there were platforms that really target entertainment as far as production is concerned to build the next future army of of, of Michael Bay or you know, the, you know, because these directors can't do. This, this is, so it's big. I know it's it's a, when I want to start talking about this, it makes me want to go crazy. But there's so much opportunity to it that universities should be 
costing events to to make theater art a theater artist or the guy that controls lights in the theater art department should be a gaffer because you you've been there so kids don't have to go through education just to have certification but to fit in a society or in a particular place in the society that really matters so you have your education you're prepped from a child to an adult that's where you have geniuses where society is filled with genius young people and production has that potential because every single department is 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 is, is a is a discipline that you have every, each of that discipline is a course in the university but then kids are not I feel kids should be exposed to these things more. Good point. Very good point indeed. And that because I think, uh, as you have said, much of it is that people don't know. So when people, people know, think yeah, about people going into the film industry, they only think about perhaps two or three key roles, the director, the one who carries the camera, and then the actor. Okay, so good point. But that leads and, me and then to what, what, what they stand to gain, what they stand exactly, to get. Exactly, exactly. What can I offer? What What right. is missing? Right. So truly, I, I do agree with you that some education in that regard is necessary. That leads me to well, what I would call our last question here, which is also from Tony. Uh, he's focusing now really on what we were just talking about. And he says, as you know, one of the points of worry about Nigerian higher education is lack of industry experience. Some institutions like the PAU began very intentionally to correct that kind of education. Does Aja Film Works accept university interns? Do you partner with any training institutions? Well, we accept university interns, but based on capacity, we can take in much. We, um, 70 to 50 percent of, of some of the professionals you have now because like i said our industry is young and I'm, i myself I'm, I'm i'm still in my mid-age um, um to get and we're still growing okay and we're still most of us are still in the part of building our capacity i i fall into i'd say the third generation of the third to fourth generation of filmmakers that do high quality stuff and the next, the other guys is like them Kula Fulayo, them Tunde Kilani, you know, those are all our dads, you know, those are, you know, our, our you know, so it, it's, 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 a, it's a mindset thing that we need to build. And, and, and at the same time, it's difficult to do to accommodate, to accept. We, we don't have the capacity yet to take about a hundred interns or 50. We only 50. do it. <laughs> It wouldn't How, be effective uh, anyway. <laughs> you know, if we had, I mean, if we had, if we got to a level where we have 20 to 50 producers, each producer has a team. Right. And each team has a department. So that means we could be able to take 100 interns that would be distributed into each of these production teams. Right. So right now we can only take maybe five or four. So I'll be able to, you know, get close you know, attention to them or when we're in production. And then when you're in production, you don't want to overcrowd the set with people with less skill. So it's, so it's like, in, so it's a, a thing we're still, we're still designing a system or a structure that will be able to educate. Because for us, we really need to have succession. Yeah. It has to be there. Oh, so we only have this one guy called Aruna. He's like the only group in this country that I've seen that rigs close to Hollywood. It's and it's in his fifties, and I'll be telling him you should be having at least four assistants with you, interns. But it's like, and then there's the mindset with young people that usually like well, once they get in, they want to blow, boom, like okay, so it becomes difficult. But then we're still working on that that structure, and 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 like I said, it's a growing thing. We're still getting there. We're still we're still trying to develop our own skills to be good enough to share more information to be able to be effective. But I, we try and these days, we, we feel that um, um, learning these days, like I said, it happens online. So we have at Free Works Academy, we do trainings once every year. And the inquiry has been, that's a conversation for another day. It's been insane that, so it's a matter of, capacity for us to be able to be like, you know what, 
I need to be able to see through 500 inquiries to find 10 to 50 students that are worthy because filmmaking is a thing where it's for a selected few with a selected skill. Just like before you get to, you have to take aptitude test. So yeah. you have to see through. So it's a whole lot of logistics, a whole lot of process that we need to go through to be able to get to a point where we're like, wow, in 20 something, we were able to train a hundred students that are practicing in the industry because we want to do that. We want to be able to impact, but that capacity for us is still very small. And then you can even still see the result because we have some of our best guys right now working for other production companies and other production houses like gaffers, like focus pullers, DOPs, directors that were interns that were assistants to me. A lot of them are building their own team. So it's, it's a gradual process that is, is germinating its seeds in buckets. But we're, we're getting to that point really soon. That's important. Well, I have here, I had said that was the last question, but I think I lied because some people have dropped questions here now. <laughs> I, have, I have a question from Achanya. Well, has is a longer question. Let me ask you first the one of Godwin, who says, how can we be updated when you are beginning training? Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure if you follow our different works platforms, Facebook, uh, Instagram, um, Twitter, all the social media platforms, YouTube, it's everything we want to do goes there, right? It was on, I was supposed to be running, um, the second quarter of the year's approach, I was supposed to be running our first um, filmmaking for dummies. I, I haven't really done filmmaking for dummies. People with zero experience try to, so I'm working on, a, 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 I'm working on a three-day three boot camp where I'm introducing young people into the concept of being a filmmaker because right. it's an ideology and I don't see it as, oh, it's a cost you need to come and get saved or start making money, no. It's an ideology and I'm trying to create a boot camp. I will find I'm still building up to that to be able to get prep young people's mind to be built into, into what happens as a filmmaker before you're now going to, I want to learn how to be a camera operator. So it's a broad thing. And as soon as you know we're set for it, I'm, I'm sure we're going to, you're going to be seeing it all our social media platforms. Fantastic. Thank you. Now, Ochanya's question, which really will be our last question. We are just about out of time. She says, in reference to organic film and the look and feel of it, I understand there's a workflow of shooting flat and transferring to a pro color software like DaVinci Revolve. However, when this is done in long format film, it seems only the short formats like the music video or commercials get it right. Can you please speak to this? That's a rather technical question. <laughs> so um, if, you, if you look, okay, let's talk about budget. So I'm sure you've seen in a music video that cost about 2 million in a scene. So you, you want to do that for 30 days? So you're talking of the crew, the expertise, equipment. So we're still, we're not far from there yet. We're not, I believe we're not far from there. We're not far from that yet, but it costs, it is a, it's a conversation of budget to be able to put that much attention to detail consistently for 90 minutes. So we're working on a commercial that is just 60 seconds and we've been doing posts for the past two months. We're mixed, we're mixed down, we're mixing down the sound. Everything that moves in the picture has a sound. That means we're doing poly, we're paying different sound artists to do different things for a 30 seconds, 60 seconds commercial. Multiply that attention to detail by 90 minutes. So you, you can, you, you know what I mean but at that point. So it's, um, it's something where we're going to go into a point where investors are coming to say, you know what, we were dropping 200 million or 100 or 500 million for a film. That is going to take three months of pre-production or six months, because the better the picture, the better the story is in preparations, like right? time taken into traveling to Makodi to find a particular hill that faces the sun in a certain way because we want to shoot a scene that has that look. We have to go there and shoot it, okay? We come to Abuja, we should, we come to a kitty state to find a location that has waterfall. We need to light the entire waterfall. We need to block the sun. 
so the term quality is 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 not really far from quality of entertainment is not really far from money okay and by money i mean the right expertise the right people that can handle that project and the attention put into the detail of planning it so I do really understand what you mean. And I, I think I ask myself that question every day, but I found the answer is just, man, a good team and the right budget, you know, makes a good, you know, good quality entertainment. The picture wise, the sound wise, the talent, you know, the way they look in the film, the way the camera moves, all of that is you know, still building up to that, that point. And, like I said, we're close. And obviously there are films coming out these, these days that are quite very impressive in Hollywood. So yeah, that's just what I feel is the why we don't have that in films yet. Thank you so very much, Annie. This has been a most enlightening conversation. I will just leave you with what Oloranti says here, but you have already given the answer to that one. He Oloranti says he hopes that you can help with the uh, positions for internship for those the young talents of the NFI, Joss. Yeah, I'm, I'm planning to visit. <laughs> I'm, plan, I'm, I'm personally planning. I'm, so, to be honest, some of the best people we've worked with in our production team came from NFI. Um, the generation of the 90s and the, and the, the, the early 90s and the late 90s. And, and those are the best groups, the best gaffers in Adidas right now from NFI. So I've been planning to visit NFI um, so looking for the opportunity to go work because I really like to get in touch or get up and close with with this talent. I need to talk to them, see them myself. So I'm I'm planning to go to NFI sometime this year. I haven't been to Joss in a long time. I want to, uh, you know, visit Joss and spend a weekend in Joss, and then I'll be able to. I really want to come to NFI and see because I know they are young and fresh minds these days in, in in film school in NFI that you know they just need to be exposed. So. That's a very good one that I'm um, from Olu, Olu, Olu Ranti. I think, I think you made I'll, his I'll, day. I'll, <laughs> yeah, With that I'll, 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 be, I'll be glad, I'll, I'll be glad to come to Unify and I'm, I'm working right. on that. So. Okay, fantastic. Well, Annie, thank you so very much. I think we have learned so much about the the sector of the industry. At least for me, you have blown my mind with all that you've said. Thank you so much. We my look pleasure. forward to we look forward to doing more really in terms of at least what lies in our own cut that of education okay and of yes. course we will be reaching out for you to for guidance on this one but certainly it's fascinating all that's going on here so thank you so very much okay. for the time and thank you very much it. to our participants for being with us this morning and um well i invite you for the next one which will come up next session which will come up in a couple of weeks Okay, so thank you so much. Have a very good day, everyone. Annie, thank you thank so you very much. much. Have a well, good day. Thank you okay, very much then. for having me. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. <laughs>